Yes, what a fantastic morning we've had. Such inspiring and kind of thoughtful presentations. And I want to just give you some food for thought before you go to lunch. And think about how can you use all of that fantastic technology, that fantastic intelligence, to think about how can you not just deliver the same product, the same service, perhaps in a slightly better way, but how can you truly innovate your business and innovate your brand in order to do new things now that you've got this power behind, behind your company? So think about how can you change the game. So I'm going to look at four things very quickly. Firstly, the zigzag world, the zeitgeist which we live in today. And what does that mean for you when you're sitting here in Amsterdam? And think about how can I grow my business and how can I innovate in different ways? Secondly, the idea of disruptive innovators. Clay Christensen talked about how disruptive innovation can transform technologies and they can transform products. I want to go beyond that because the new generation of companies do more. They disrupt their markets, not just their products. They think about how can they change the rules of the ways in which customers, consumers and companies work together. Thirdly, about the customer experience or the customer's experience, their experience, not your experience. So think about what is it which they achieve or even could achieve which they could never do before. So it's about their experience. And then finally, might sound crazy, but how can you help them to change the world? And maybe you can change the world a little bit or your world at the same time. So I just want to start by talking about my passion. So I started life as a nuclear physicist or left brain logic. Fascinating, but a bit boring. And my first real job after that was to join an airline. And I started to work in brands and marketing. And the best job I ever did was when I was 27 years old and I was the brand manager of Concord. And you know, that might sound, for those of you who can remember Concord, that might sound something, you know, wow, fantastic. But to be honest, most of the time what I was doing was I was watching the departure times and I was watching people processing through the check-in and then setting off on whatever they were doing. And then somebody said to me, you know, what really matters is what they're doing. And it was when I started talking about to, to those passengers about why are you traveling on Concorde? Not just how does it feel and the thrill of it, but where are you going? I'm doing, going to do a billion dollar deal. I'm going to meet my girlfriend for lunch in New York and then I'm coming back for dinner. So the idea is as to what they're doing. What does the customer seek to achieve? And so my passion has been about not what products and what services do people have, but what do they do for their customers? So you know, even in the business to business world, I was working with Tata Steel recently, both in India and here in Europe. It's easy to make steel and to sell sheets of steel. It's a commodity. It's a bit boring. But when you start to think about how can that steel create a better car, a lighter, faster car, which can reduce carbon emissions and which you can do new things with, then it starts to get exciting. So thinking about how can the Tata Steel people work with BMW or whichever brand to think about how can their company really help BMW to do amazing things. Just two days ago, I was in the UAE, working with the stock exchange. They were talking about regulation of the stock exchange. But then we started talking about, well, what does actually the customer want to do? And who is the customer? And we saw, well, actually, they want to invest better. They want to find better ways to realize better investments. They want to do new things. The stock exchange wants to increase investment and help to grow the economy. So once you start thinking about your customer as opposed to what you do, it starts to become much more interesting, exciting, but also the space for innovation becomes much greater. And I guess when we live in this world, the opportunity to innovate is huge, but also the requirement to innovate is huge. Some people describe it as volatile, but it's actually the most vibrant world we've ever lived in. Such an eclectic mix of opportunities. And then you see the, the tectonic shifts in this world, from west to east, 
from big companies dominating markets to small companies having much more agility to get to the best opportunities first. People trusting small companies rather than big companies. The shift from male to female in terms of purchasing power and intelligence and disposable income. The shift from average to individual. So as marketers, we're not blasting campaigns at everybody in the same way, but we're thinking about individually how can we engage each different person. And so responding and thinking about the different types of experiences which we deliver to different people. And then we have a world where we're no longer in control. In a world of surplus demand, then the brands were in control. People came to the brands because we, they wanted us. But in a world of surplus supply, like today, we have to go to the customer or consumer and do things on their terms. So if you really want to sell music to customers, download a music, you think about, well, where do they listen to music? So, for example, you might listen to music when you're going out running or in the gym. So that actually might be the best time to sell music. So think about how can you sell music in the context of sport and fitness and through the channels by which people connect with those things or the places and times when they're actually thinking about the music. And continuing to do things on the customer's terms, thinking about their experience which they're having as opposed to your experience you want to give them. So doing things in a very different way. But at the same time, our ambitions grow and our expectations as consumers. All of us want to do things which we never did before. And expectations don't just come from what the brand says or even their competitors say. It comes from different industries. So we do something, we experience something in a retailer, we expect that from our telecoms company. We go to Disneyland, we expect that from our shopping mall. So our expectations as well as our experiences constantly increase at this kind of exponential speed at the same time as the world keeps increasing. We just take something simple like Nespresso. So many of us today, we think about, you know, how can I have that better cup of coffee? And Nespresso, as we all know, started selling coffee machines. And as we all know, the money's not in the coffee machine, it's in the pod which you keep having to buy and you subscribe to the membership club and then you get it delivered to your door on a weekly basis. How much more money, profitability, does Nespresso make out of the pods compared to the coffee machines? Is it 10 or 100 times or 1,000 times? Any guesses? It's actually 1,000 times. So thinking about the ongoing experience of your customer, not just selling the product to them, but the profitability is actually in the long term, actually way in which they use those products and services to help them to do whatever they're trying to do. Look at that beautiful Tesla sedan. Has anybody driven a Tesla yet? fantastic car. Oh, you have. Well done. So 400 kilometers and zero carbon emissions, faster acceleration than a Lamborghini. And actually, you know, if you go to California, you know, I was there just recently, you know, it is now the car, the cool car to drive around in. But it's actually not about the car. The genius of, of Tesla is not about the car and the engine and the engineering which makes that, uh, that lithium oxide battery work. But it's actually about the brand and the way in which that brand is sold. So I was walking through the Century City shopping mall. I was walking past the Gucci shop and the Prada shop. Designer experiences, aspirational, emotional purchases. And then I came to the Tesla shop. There's only two cars in there. It wasn't like one of those long garages where you kind of go and you choose from 50 different cars and you test drive and it's dirty and it's masculine and all that kind of stuff. You look at them, you dream, you, you, you aspire to them, and then you sign in the dotted line without ever driving it. So think about how can you buy a brand because it's emotionally engaging and it does more for you. And the genius beyond that of Elon Musk who created Tesla is actually 
well, how do I get a charge? The biggest kind of concern of a consumer would be, well, how do I keep charging my car? So when he made his fortune from PayPal, he put his money into three things. One is about space travel, or traveling to Mars even. Secondly is about the cars themselves, Tesla cars. And the third is, is a business called Solar City, generating solar power. And Solar City provides the supercharger network. And I think actually that's the thing which will change the market. So once you have a convenient network on, and fast charging stations for these cars, that's when people will make the shift to using electric cars. The supercharger is like the iTunes of iPod. iPod was just another music player in some ways until iTunes came along, and that made the difference. So time to think bigger. Time to think about what is the Nespresso model of your business? What is the supercharger for your industry? How could you create a network which engages the consumer on an ongoing basis and does more for them? Or a, a pods by mail subscription business by which you can increase your profitability and continue to serve your customer. So thinking in this bigger way as to using all of this data and technology and analytics and intelligence to think about what more can I do for people and what more can I do for my business. So I set out 18 months ago to say, well, who are the companies who are changing the world? Who are the companies who are the real disruptive innovators? And we held, we started holding, we'll continue to a series of competitions across the world. So from South America through to Singapore, through to Eastern Europe, Turkey, uh, and, and so on. Different places. Who are the companies who are shaking up the markets? Not the biggest, because we all know who they are, but who are the shaker-uppers? Who are changing the mindsets of the consumers and their customers in terms of their expectations and their dreams? And this company here, so you can see Stefan Klein, he was the winner of the European competition and the overall competition for 2014. And guess what he built? Anybody guess? A car which can fly. And I thought, bullshit, this can't be true, this can't happen, the car can't really fly. But actually he is the chief designer of Volkswagen Audi, now retired, was somebody who actually had a great expertise in that, and he also had a passion because his passion was for flight. And he combined his, his whole career of expertise with his passion going forward and said, well, how can I bring those two things together and do something which Henry Ford said back 100 years ago would be soon coming? So now the Aeromobile is actually a car which can fly 400 kilometers, that can fly 220 kilometers per hour, and it's just received almost $100 million of funding from NASA and Boeing to go into a production stage. Just imagine how that can transform a customer's experience. So many more examples in terms of companies who have bigger ideas. So you can have the intelligence, but what you also need is the idea. The idea to think about how can you make people's lives better, because that's what I think any brand is about business or consumer, how can you make people's lives better? And being audacious to say, well, how can I do that? How can I do something remarkable which nobody has done before? And really it's about saying, you know, I don't want to live by the rules of other people. I don't want to just fit into the existing marketplace which has been shaped by my predecessors and by the competitors. They've shaped the way customers behave. They've shaped the price points which customers will pay for things. They've shaped the places people buy things for. They've shaped the way people use those products and users, services. But you can reshape it. You can imagine a future in your own vision. And then you can redesign or reshape your market to your advantage. So like the supercharger, think about how does the market work? And then how can you be more successful and do more for people in that new marketplace. And one of the companies which I had the privilege to, to meet was Google. And it wasn't going to Google Plex, which was exciting. Everybody's read about them in the magazines and seen the bean bags and all that kind of stuff. It was actually when I walked around the corner, I was taken on the tour, and 200 meters around the corner, you come to a small factory. 
It's called the Google X. Anybody been to Google X? It's a moonshot factory. What's a moonshot factory? Well, a moonshot factory is where they create the future, where they shape markets in their vision, audacious ideas which do new things. It's where Google Glass came from. But more exciting than that, it's where they're now creating a whole series of hot air balloons which will float around the world and give the entire globe immediate free Wi-Fi. They're creating space elevators, into incredibly strong steel rods which can travel between space and Earth at phenomenal speeds. They're looking for driverless cars which can transform the way we work. And they're looking for a cure for cancer. And the thing it says on the door and on each wall as you walk through this moonshot factory is don't just think about being 10% better. Because most of us do. Most of us think about being 10% better, 10% cheaper, 10% improved quality, whatever it might be. Incrementalism. Think about being 10 times better. Because actually for 10 times better rather than 10% better, you probably need to spend three, four times longer. But the benefit is that you jump out of this world of incrementalism where people copy you faster than you've launched something. That you jump beyond what people expect to you start to reimagining what people imagine. So Google X, 10 times, not 10%. So these 100 companies, which I learned about, I put together in a book. It's called Game Changers. It's now out. And what I wanted to understand is what can we learn from each of these companies? Because I think the best ideas don't come from your direct competitors. They come from other sectors, other places in the world. And our challenge is to say, how can we creatively apply those ideas to our own business? And when we're innovating, it's not enough just to look to America or even to Europe, but to think about what's happening in the real emerging world, where people are actually bursting with ideas and passion to be successful in their lives. So these are the game changers. These are the companies who are changing the markets. And I'm going to show you all of them in four minutes. I'll try. But for you, think about it. There's 100 ideas here. And how could you creatively take some of those ideas and apply them to your business? OK, let's go. So in terms of the retail space, if you think about the different companies in retail, Amazon, so with a dash, changing the way in which people do their shopping and deliver to their home. Aussie Farmers has become the main way you deliver groceries. Will I am 3D printing, Coke bottles into jeans. Etsy, connecting people through artist markets. Fashion designers, actually making fashion better. And then managing a portfolio of brands which keeps changing. Making authentic, modern and real. And curating the best ideas rather than letting people search for them. And being truly personal in the way in which you deliver it. And at the same time, staying local whilst being global. In the world of technology, Apple in terms of the system, not just the product. Philosophy in terms of emotion for skincare, not just the actual product behind it. Thinking frugally in terms of how can you create cheap things better. 65% of Lego people connecting together. Beautiful products, not just essential ones, and natural ones at the same time. It's not about the running shoes or the clothing, it's about how fast I can run and doing better. So virtual reality, to change the gaming experience and crowdsourcing the way you do things. Why is toilet paper white? So think about banking. You know, looking at Ali or Zinc, targeting Gen Y only, nobody else. La Casha, in terms of uh, kiosking for banking, Fido, Facebook Lives, drive your interest rates. First National is in South Africa, the biggest seller of iPads, i2, a truly business-to-business -business bank. Movin bringing together all the knowledge of banking in one place and pays to a telecoms company which became a bank and a healthcare company. And Square in terms of changing the way in which people work. Umqua, learning from Starbucks and Gap to change the customer experience and Zidisha, peer-to-peer financing across Africa, helping farmers to do better. 23Me, $99 to look understand your uh, DNA. Think about how can Hippocrates bring together all the knowledge for a doctor in his pocket. Genentech, 
personalizing technology, intuitive heart surgery delivered by a robot. Now we are in a hospital, two business models, one making money, one helping people. 3D printing of new organs. Patients like me connecting you with other people with the same problems. Scanner do like Star Trek telling you how good you are. And second sight, giving sight to people who do not have sight. Alibaba, the karaoke uh, kung fu CEO. Arm, much better than Intel through um, reference designs. Bartiel telling gift cards, doing things from a customer's perspective. And Google X, we heard about 10 times, not 10%. Hawaii, in terms of thinking about how can you just keep things simple, Raspberry Pi, creating clubs across the world for technology. Samsung, in terms of selling all its engineers to drama school. And Tencent, perhaps the most interesting Chinese company, but Xiaomi, now the third largest smartphone manufacturer in the world. Incredible. Aeromobile, you can fly, why not? But Air Asia, targeting different sectors and become the most profitable airline in the world. Emirates in terms of connecting the world, not just serving a destination. Kulula having fun at the same time. Movio turning a scooter into your trolley bag, which you can take on board. And Pipistrel electric aircraft, which can make things better. Redbus connecting the buses of India. And Virgin Galactic, not just about going to space, but flying from Amsterdam to Sydney in two hours. Zip cars in terms of leasing cars, not buying cars. Transforming a Gen Y generation of what I want, 3D hubs. 500 places in Amsterdam where you can do your 3D printing. Corning, in terms of thinking, how can you create the future of glass? Dyson transforming the way in which you clean and Brascom turning waste into renewable energy. GE, leasing not selling and having beautiful machines. Local motors, anybody can create a car like that for $50. SpaceX, in terms of transforming NASA. Syngenta, feeding the future world. Tata, thinking about how can you take luxury brands like uh, Jaguar and Range Rover and Tesla in terms of thinking how do you then create the network to make the market work. Ashmai, so think about fashion in a different way. Tom's one for one, a different business model to help the world. The sequel in terms of getting funky in Spain and edited the data behind it which drives fashion. Gilan taking traditional art and turning it into modern design and Kering thinking about how do you manage the portfolio. Patagonia with anti-branding, don't buy it because you don't need it. Rafa creating a cycling club. Shanghai taking Chinese brands to Europe and Threadless being the most crowdsourced company you could ever imagine. Fantastic. In the world of media, you've got Al Jazeera in terms of communicating to the world a different point of view. Coursera taking the world knowledge, education online. Future creating fan bases. Netflix creating a very simple subscription model which can transform any music fan bases and music again. Pixar, being human at the same time through technology. Red Bull becoming a media company. It's not about the drinks, it's about inspiring people. Spotify and Supercell, in terms of how do you have a dual freemium business model to do things differently. And at Shahidi across Africa, crowdsourcing the best news instantly and genuinely. Aeroshot, zero calories in terms of the way in which you eat beauty in combining cosmetics and food together. Grameen Danone in terms of microfinance to help create the largest dairy across Africa. And Juan Valdez in LA Organic, think about design to do things better. Myrick taking Armenian culture to the world. And Moa Beer, the winery which makes the most fantastic beers. Nespresso we've talked about, great cup of coffee. Yeni Reki selling not the drink but the culture. And Zestri. Until a few years ago, a Chinese gooseberry which became the kiwi fruit. So think about even how can you change your market and change the name of the market. So I think from those hundred companies, <laughs> I think from those hundred companies, you might have one idea. So how can you take something from a different place and apply it to your own business? How can you transform your customer's experience by thinking about the purpose, the business model, the products and services, and the way in which you deliver that to the customers or even to different customers in different parts of the world. So what does that mean for the customer experience today? What does it mean as we go forward, as you go forward, and create something better for your customer? Well, I guess the starting point, where do we start, is to rethink your purpose. You come to work every day not to make your product. You come to work every day 
not just to think about your own business. That's an incredibly small view of the world. I think you come to work every day to make people's lives better. That's your purpose. And think about some relevant way of explaining that. What is it you do which makes people's lives better? Or if it's business to business, how do you help the businesses to grow? And when you start to think in this bigger way, you know, not like a finance company which is always selling credit cards at 4.5% interest rate or 4.6% interest rate, but you actually think people want Gucci handbags or new cars with it, then you have much more space to innovate and you have much more space to do things for the customer. Anybody got Harley Davidson? Anybody got a Harley Davidson? Come on, anybody dream of having a Harley Davidson? Okay, we've got some oh, men and women, that's good. Because the Harley Davidson's brand definition is actually about, I am a 60 year old accountant with no hair. And I love to dress in black leather. <laughs> and I love to drive through small towns and scare the shit out of children. <laughs> That's what the brand is about. The brand is what it does for the customer. The brand is not the bike. The bike is not as good as many of the Japanese bikes today. And the customer's passion is not actually for the bike itself, but it's what they do with the bike, and particularly how they can do things together. 60% of Harley Davidson Group's revenues comes from holidays, Harley holidays. So it's the love of people doing things with the product they buy, which actually is where the money comes from. So innovating your experience to do more for the customer. So then think about how do you articulate this through a brand. So think about what do you enable people to do? So like the steel company, it's not about selling boring steel. The stock exchange, it's not about just regulating a market. It's about enabling people to make beautiful cars, which are lighter and faster and better. Or it's about helping people to invest and to become uh, wealthy and therefore to have a better life. So what do you enable people to do? Enable being the key word. And then how can they do it better with you? And why would they recommend it to other people in a world of mouth to mouth? Then what would make them tell other people about it? So if I was helping you to define your brand or to rethink your brand, it would be about that. And particularly, what do you enable people to do better than anybody else can? And think about the experience which we have today. We see many technologies and they really do transform both the ways in which it helps you, but also the ways in which it connects people together. So think about how do you innovate. And in the Game Changer book, you'll find incredibly simple models like this, but they work. So change your why, change your purpose. You could also change your who. So think about how do you reach out to a new customer. Zipcars, for example, targeted the young Gen Yers who were just shaping their dreams about owning a car as they were at college. And so they never wanted to own a car, they always just hired a cool Mini Cooper or whatever it might be, whenever they wanted. Change the what in terms of the products and services which you deliver. And then think about change the how, the business model and the customer experience. And that's where you'll get the most impact through innovating the business model and the customer experience because everybody can make the product and service. It's almost identical what your competitors do, but it's thinking about how you deliver it in a different way. Look at Disney, over a billion dollars invested over the last 24 months in terms of changing again the Disneyland experience, much more human, much more individual, and much more personal, but using big data at the same time to make that happen through a wearable bracelet my magic band, which I now put around my wrist. And then think about marketing. You know, marketing used to be about campaigns which you push at people and say, buy it now, buy it now, buy it now, even if you didn't want to buy it now. The same message to everyone. So today, the brand starts with being relevant, a proposition which is about you and how I can help you to achieve more. And then an experience which enables you 
to achieve more. And around that is a series of activities which we all do, which you're familiar with. It's social and it's driven by co-created content. It's personal through the, the data and the ways in which you engage together. And perhaps most of all today, it's real time. It's not planned in advance. It's like a media center working with the customer on a constant basis to connect the two together on what's topical and relevant like music in the gym. So think about how can you inspire and enable people to do more. And then the experience. You know, we've all come from commodity products. There is, there is no commodity product today. And there is no reason any commodity needs to be a commodity. Just look at bottled water, for example. But then you turn a commodity product into a branded product. And then you turn that into a service beyond the product through empathetic design. And then you turn a service into an experience by integrating, joining up the touch points, and doing more. But you go beyond that. And it's 30 years ago since I started learning about customer experiences. I read a book called Moments of Truth by Jan Carlson of SAS Airlines. And we need to move beyond the touch points to really think about how can you enable the customer to achieve what they're doing when they go home with the product, when they're sitting in their desk with the new software they, which they bought, or when they're experiencing it in different ways. So it's the customer's experience, way beyond where you're involved, which actually matters most, and where the value to them is, and potentially, therefore, where the value to you is, like Nespresso. So thinking about that in a better way. Just like the coffee growers of Colombia. So the cooperative of coffee growers used to earn about two cents for every cup of coffee. And then they packaged their coffee into their own branded bags of coffee beans and they started to own 20 cents per cup of coffee. And then they said, hey, we can do even better than this. And they looked to how do you create an experience, and they created Juan Valdez Cafe. So the largest and most inspiring and most authentic coffee um, chain across South America now. So now they earn $2, 100 times more, rather than the two cents from each cup of coffee. So think about how you can achieve more for the customer and be more successful yourself. And the final part is all this stuff about brands, all about uh, experiences, all about connecting with the customer in a world of collaboration. But it's not about forcing the customer to have a relationship with you. It's not saying you have to be loyal to my brand. And I feel really uncomfortable about CRM today. Because if you look in a world where people really don't trust brands, it's actually about how can you facilitate customers to connect with other customers, which is where the magic lies. And how can you create communities of brands and communities of people which actually want to do things together? So like the Harley Davidson example, the community is the Harley owners group, and the activity of the owners is going on holiday or drives together, and that's where the money is, but that's where their passion and that's where their love is. So think about how can you take your brand through to a proposition, through to experience, but also think about how can you build a community about the things they love and about things they want to do. And use all that fantastic knowledge and intelligence, analytics and technology to help you to do it. And if you look, just we've talked about Apple Watch. But if you compare the advertising this time compared to the iPod 10 years ago, it is completely different. It is not about the watch, whereas it was about the iPod. This time, it's all about how you can do more because you're wearing the watch. So how does it make people's lives better? So it's time to rethink your customers, their experience, I believe. Time to walk in their shoes and time to think about how can you do more for them. And it's time to change their world, because I think if you do imagine in these different ways, you can do amazing things for them. So the question really is, what will you do? How will you take this power, this zettabytes of power which we now have, and how can you actually do something significant with your brand and your customer experience? 
So in the book, we have a game changer lab, which you've got 16 canvases where you can get started and think about each of these different steps, working from the vision and strategy through to how do you innovate through to the brands and propositions and experiences, and then how do you embed it and ensure it turns in to profitable growth. Think about how can you help your customers to be the winners. And when you look in particular at the vision canvas and the brand canvas and the engagement canvas, it will give you a different perspective in terms of how do you start to create a great customer experience and how do you inspire people with what you do. So I'll leave you with these three things. To be bold. Will you be bold? Okay. <laughs> to be brave. Will you be brave? Okay, we're not sure about this one. Everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. You're about to go for lunch. So I want you to be bold. I want you to be brave. And I want you to turn to the person next to you. Give them a big hug. <laughs> and I want you to be brilliant. Be bold, be brave, be brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you.